Chapter 6 Split the Wind The sky was dark by the time they got to the rise. The wind was cool, almost cold. Whoa, said Slim. Dusty slowed to a halt. The camp down there, Slim said in a low voice. And that patch of cheese. Jack saw a campfire at the bottom of the slope. He saw the horses gathered in a dark clump. One let out a whinny. Hear that, said Slim. The mare. She sends his sunset is nearby. The mare whinnied again. Sounds like she's tied to a tree, said Slim. I think the rest of the herd are loose. That's our plan, whispered Jack. Molly, you stay here and guard sunset said Slim. Right, said Annie. Shorty, you and I ride down near their camp, said Slim. You keep Dusty quiet while I cut the mare loose. How did it keep the horse quiet, wondered Jack. Once the mare's loose, she'll break her sunset, said Slim. And you and Sunset take off, Smiley. Got it, said Annie. Then we'll split the wind, said Slim. What's that mean? wondered Jack. Till we get to Blue Canyon, said Slim. Where's that? wondered Jack. All set? Any questions? asked Slim. Nope, Annie said cheerfully. Yep, about a million, thought Jack. Okay, partners, said Slim. See you soon, Smiley. Come on, Shorty. Have fun, said Annie. Fun, thought Jack. Is she nuts? Our lives are at stake. Slim snapped his reins. Dusty started down the rise. Their way was lit by a nearly full moon and a million stars. Maybe now I can ask Slim some questions, thought Jack. But just then, voices came from the wrestler's camp. They were mean voices, followed by mean laughter. A chill went through Jack. Dusty halted. This is far enough, whispered Slim. He slipped off of Dusty. Keep him here, Slim whispered to Jack, and keep him quiet. Wait, whispered Jack. He needed more information, but Slim was gone. Jack gripped the reins and held his breath. He hoped Dusty wouldn't do anything. For a moment, Dusty was still. But then he snorted and began walking. Oh no, thought Jack. He tried to think of the rules and how to cheat a horse. He remembered. A soft hand, a firm voice. He patted Dusty softly. Whoa, he said firmly. To his surprise, Dusty froze and was quiet. Jack remembered another rule. A sunny attitude. He patted Dusty again. Don't worry, he whispered. Everything's going to be fine. Just then, a loud whinny came from the herd of mustangs. They began moving up the moonless slope. Hey, the horses! A wrestler shouted. A gun went off. Jack ducked. Come on, Shorty! came Slim's voice. Jack looked up. Slim was riding the mare. Jack was shocked. He had thought that Slim was coming back to ride Dusty. Instead, Slim rode right past him. As he got close to Annie, she took off on Sunset. The mare galloped after Sunset, and the band of mustangs galloped after the mare. Bang! Bang! Jack snapped his reins. Go, Dusty, he said. Dusty leaped after the mustangs. Jack nearly fell off. He clutched the reins in one hand and the saddle horn in the other. Bang! Bang! <laughs> The rustlers were on their horses now. They were getting closer. Hurry, Jack cried. Dusty cleared the rise in an awkward leap. Jack started to slip out of the saddle. He let go of the reins and tried to hold on to the saddle horn, but his weight pulled him down. He closed his eyes as he fell to the ground. Oh, man, thought Jack, this is the end. He opened his eyes. Dusty was looking at him. Jack scrambled up and tried to climb shouts from high-pitched back into the saddle. It was hard without Slim's help. As Jack struggled, he heard the wrestlers. The horses gave neighs. Jack looked back. A shimmering right figure was moving across the top of the rise.
the wrestler's horses were panicking and backing away. Jack didn't have time to think about what he was seeing. He knew it might be only his chance to escape. Using all his strength, he pulled himself into the saddle. Go, Dusty! He shouted. Dusty took off at full gallop per prairie. Jack held on for dear life. Chapter Seven: Ghost Stories. Jack bounced in the saddle. He felt the cool night wind against his face. He couldn't tell where they were going, but he trusted Dusty to follow the others. Finally, Dusty caught up with the herd as they began to slow down. Jack snapped his reins. Dusty came beside Slim and Annie. "Howdy," said Slim. "Howdy," said Jack. "Howdy," said Annie. "Are you okay?" Jack pushed his glasses into place. "Yup," he said. "You?" "Yup," she said. "That was some good riding, Shorty," said Slim. "Thanks," said Jack, smiling. He liked being called Shorty now. "Where are we headed, boss?" Jack asked Slim. "Blue Canyon," said Slim. Okay with you? Yup," said Jack. "This way," said Slim. He slapped his horse, and they all speeded up again. Slim steered the herd to the left. Soon led them through a deep, narrow pass. Finally, they came to a boxy open space surrounded by walls of rock and lit by moonlight. "We'll curl the mustangs here in Blue Canyon," Slim said. He got off his horse. He helped Jack down, and he slipped off sunset. Take him to Ma," Slim told Annie. Annie led Sunset to the mare. In the moonlight, the two mustangs rubbed against one another and neighed. As Jack patted Dusty's damp neck, he remembered the last two rules: praise and reward. Thanks," he whispered to Dusty. "You were great. You were super great." Slim unsaddled Dusty, then handed Jack his saddlebags. "Take those over to the grassy spot." We'll camp there," he said. As Jack carried the saddlebags, his boots felt stiff and tight. His legs were sore and wobbly, but he didn't mind. He threw himself down the saddlebags and his backpack. Then he flopped himself down. He was very tired, and he joined them. They seemed so happy to be free and together again," she said, gazing at the moonlit mustangs. "Yup," said Jack. He lay back, using his backpack as a pillow. He looked up at the stars. If we just had the answer to the riddle, everything would be perfect. He said. "Yup," said Annie. "Hey, Slim," he called. "I have a question for you." "Shoot," said Slim. "Do you know the answer to this riddle?" Jack asked. Out of the blue, my lonely voice calls out to you. Who am I? Am I? Slim was silent for a moment, then said, "Sorry, Shorty, don't know that one." Jack's heart sank. "That's okay," he said. "We don't either." "I have a question too," said Annie. "Why does the piano in the hotel play by itself?" "I do know the answer to that one," said Slim. "What is it?" said Annie. "It's Lonesome Luke," said Slim. "He's a ghost of a cowboy who wanders the prairie." Jack sat straight up. I saw him. I saw him. He said, "I just remembered. He scared the wrestlers. If he hadn't come, I never would have gotten away." Oh yeah, Slim chuckled. Well, lucky for us, Lonesome Luke sometimes liked to help folks out. Slim threw his saddle down next to Jack and Annie and sat against it. Years ago, Lonesome Luke had a gal who he was just crazy about," said Slim. She couldn't take the wild west though, so she went back east. What happened then? Asked Jack. Luke went loco. Every night he showed up at the hotel and played the piano. He played Red River Valley over and over. Then one night he just vanished into the prairie and was never seen alive again. His bones were found a year later, but folks say his ghost returns to the hotel. They play Red River Valley. It goes like this. Slim took out a harmonica. He began to play a song. It was the same sad song Jack and Nanny had heard in the hotel. Jack lay back down and listened to the lonesome tune. A coyote howled in the distance. 
The horse is thrown in the dark. I better take some notes, thought Jack. But he didn't write a word before he fell asleep. He didn't even take off his boots. Chapter Eight. Who am I? A fly buzzed by Jack's ear. He slapped it away. He opened his eyes. The sun was high above the canyon walls. He had slept a long time. Slim and Annie were sitting by a fire, drinking from tin cups. Coffee, biscuit. Annie asked Jack, "Where did you get them?" said Jack. A cowboy always carries biscuits and a canteen of coffee," said Slim. He walked over and gave Jack a biscuit and a cup of coffee. "As hard as a rock," Slim said, "and bitter as muddy river water." But a cowboy takes what he can get. Jack took a bite in the sip. The biscuit was very hard, and the coffee was very bitter. But that was okay with Jack, since cowboys didn't mind. He didn't mind either. I'll saddle up Dusty," Slim said, "and take you back to town to catch your stage. Then what will you do?" said Annie. "Head south with the herd," said Slim. "Sell 'em, then ride across the plains and round up more mustangs." While Slim saddled Dusty, Jack took out his notebook and pencil. He wrote, "Cowboy breakfast, bitter coffee, hard biscuits." Hey, Shorty! Called Slim. What are you doing? Taking notes," said Jack. "What for?" He likes writing things down," said Annie. "Oh yeah," said Slim. "Me too. In fact, I first came out west to write a book, but one thing led to another. The next thing I know, I'm a mustang herder." "Slim, you should write your book," said Annie, "and let the mustangs go free." "Think so?" said Slim. They looked at the grazing wild horse. I know so," said Annie. "Yup," said Jack. "Your book should be about the wild west, Slim." Slim kept staring at his herd. "Maybe you're right," he said. "I could settle in Laramie and write there. Won't have to chase after rustlers anymore." Slim turned back to Jack and Annie. "Yup, I think I'll be a writer. Let's go before I change my mind," he said. Yay," said Annie. "I'll go tell them." She jumped up and ran to the Mustangs. Jack packed his backpack while Slim packed his saddlebags. Then Slim and Jack climbed onto Dusty. They rode over to Annie, who was choking Sunset's neck. "I told him he's as free as the wind now," said Annie. "Sounds good," said Slim. "Give me your hand, Smiley." Slim pulled Annie onto Dusty. She sat in front of Jack. Slim snapped his reins. Dusty started off. The sun was hot as Dusty climbed out of the canyon. When they reached the top, they peered down at the canyon floor. The mustangs pranced playfully, their coats shining in the hazy light. They'll find their way out soon, Slim said. Then cut across the prairie. Y'all goodbye to your pals, Smiley. Stay with your mother, Sunset. Shouted Annie. Goodbye. Out of the blue, a voice called, "Bye." Annie gasped. "Who said that?" she said. "The ghost?" "Nope," said Jack. "It's just an echo. It's caused by sound bouncing off the canyon walls." Slim cupped his hands around his mouth. "Who am I?" he shouted. "Am I?" came the distant voice. "Oh man," Jack said softly. "That's the answer." To Morgan's riddle," said Annie. "Echo," she and Jack said together. Jack looked at Slim. "You knew the answer last night," he said. Slim just smiled and snapped his reins. "Let's go, partners," he said. <laughs> Chapter Nine: Lonesome Luke. The sun was low in the sky when they reached Rattlesnake Flats. Just let us off in front of the hotel," said Annie. "You sure that stage is coming through here?" said Slim. "Yup," said Jack and Annie together. In front of the hotel, Slim got down from Dusty. Then he helped Jack and Annie down. "I hope you'll come to Laramie and visit me," said Slim. He winked. "I might be needing some help in my book." "Sure," said Annie. Slim climbed back on Dusty. 
He looked down at Jack. You know, Shirley, he said, you might be short, but you're mighty tall in the brains. Thanks, said Jack. And Smiley Slim said, your great courage is nothing to smile about. Thanks, said Annie. Good luck with your riding, Slim, said Jack. I'm grateful to you both for steering me straight, said Slim. I promise I'll thank you someday. Really? said Annie. A cowboy never goes back on his word, said Slim. Then he snapped his reins, and Dusty loped down the street. Bye, Slim, yelled Annie. Slim coolly turned one last time. He waved his hat. So long, partners, he called. Then he rode off into the sunset. Jack let out a deep sigh. Okay, I'm ready to take my boots off now, he said. Me too, said Annie. They sat down on the porch of the hotel. They started pulling off their boots. There, Jack got them both off. He wiggled his toes. He took his sneakers out of his pack and put them on. Annie put hers on too. Man, sneakers never felt so good, said Jack. Suddenly, the sound of a piano drifted through the air. Lonesome Luke, said Annie. Jack grabbed his pack. He and Annie crept across the porch. They pushed open the swinging door. The piano was playing Red River Valley. Sitting on the piano stool was the dim but shimmering shape of a cowboy. Just then, the ghost of Lonesome Luke looked at Jack and Annie. He waved a shimmering hand. Jack and Annie waved back. Then the ghost of Lonesome Luke faded away. Cold air wafted past Jack and Annie. They both shivered. Oh man, let's go, breathed Jack. They leaped and dashed up the dusty road. They ran across the cracked ground and past the graveyard. They ran until they reached the tree with the magic tree house in it. Annie grabbed the rope ladder. She hurried up and Jack followed. They were out of breath when they got inside the tree house. Annie grabbed the ancient scroll. She unrolled it. Yay, she said. The scroll had one glowing word on it. Echo. We got it right, said Annie. Jack grabbed the Pennsylvania book. He pointed to a picture of the Frog Creek Woods. I wish we could go there, he said. The wind started to blow. The treehouse started to spin. It spun faster and faster. Then everything was still. Absolutely still. Chapter 10 Echo from the Past Jack and Annie looked outside. The sun had slipped behind the trees of the Frog Creek Woods. Annie still held the ancient scroll. She put it in the corner, next to the scroll from their ocean ship. Just two more to go, she whispered. Yup, said Jack. He unzipped his pack. He pulled out Days of the Wild West. He put it on top of a stack of books. Ready, he said. Annie was staring at the books. Her mouth dropped open. What's wrong, asked Jack. Annie just kept staring. Have you got nuts, said Jack. Annie pointed at the Wild West book. Read the cover, she said. Jack picked the book off. He read the title aloud. Days of the Wild West. He looked at Annie. So? Keep reading, said Annie. The author's name was below the title. It was in smaller letters. Jack read, Slim Cooley. Jack gasped. His mouth dropped open. He and Annie stared at the words for a long moment. Oh, man, whispered Jack. We were using Slim's book, the book he wrote after he left us. Jack and Annie shook their heads with wonder. Jack opened Slim's book. He looked at the title page. At the bottom of the page, she read, Texas Press, Dallas, 1895. Jack turned the page. He read the dedication. With thanks to Smelly and Shorty, two strangers who changed my life. Jack looked at Annie. Slim dedicated his book to us, he said. Yep, said Annie, and smiled. Jack placed Slim's book back on the stack of books. Then he and Annie left the tree house and climbed down the ladder. As they started through the woods, the trees were alive with bird sound. The air was soft and moist. 
Frog Creek seems so peaceful, said Jack. No rattlers, no rustlers, no ghosts. Yeah, but no Slim Cooley either, said Annie sadly. I know, said Jack, but when we read his book, it's like he's still talking to us. Oh, right, said Annie. You mean it's like an echo from the past? Yeah, said Jack softly. Wow. Just then, out of the blue, a voice called, Jack, Annie. It's Dad, said Annie. Coming, she and Jack shouted. Then they ran all the way home through the long shadows of the setting sun.